The production of Here Near by 22Q was made possible by Queen's University Belfast. Please note that viewer discretion is advised as sensitive topics such as depression, anxiety, and suicide will be discussed. I'm Erin Rebecca Greig, 26 years old. You may not notice anything about me, but I do have 22Q.11 deletion syndrome, and being born with 22Q is the reason for this documentary. Second to only Down syndrome, 22Q is the most common syndrome. One out of 4,000 children are born with it, and yet nobody has ever heard of it. 22Q has many cases and has over 180 symptoms, making it very hard to diagnose, including mental health disabilities, psychological problems, speech problems, and heart abnormalities. Some sadly die from this condition, while others maintain an old age. I've always hidden my condition, as it is a hidden disability in itself, but I was always scared to share my story, but I think find out more about 22Q. What if I leave my mark in the world? I've always been conflicted on making this documentary just because it is so personal, but I want to find the reasons behind this uniqueness and ask the question, who knew about 22Q? Along this journey, I have one goal, to devise and try to figure out how and why I got this condition, and I will be engaging with the 22Q charity in Northern Ireland. My name is Gillian Cassidy. I'm the core coordinator at the 22Q clinic. I have worked here for nearly eight years on a voluntary basis. I run the 22Q Northern Ireland charity. I have a daughter who is 14, who has 22Q. Holding discussions with my own psychiatrist. My name is Dr Damien Hughes. I'm a consultant psychiatrist in Belfast Trust. And delving into conversations with my own family. My name is Kirsten Gregg. I am 21 years old and I am Erin's younger sister. My name is Bruna and I am Erin's mum. I'm Paul and I'm Erin's dad. To reveal the untold chapters of my story that I've kept hidden for the last 26 years of my life. Well, when you were first born, you were full term, but you were quite small for a full term baby. You were only six pound. I did think you were quite tiny to be full born, but whenever you had your first feed, you didn't really, it didn't go very well. You seemed to have problems uh, taking your first feed. And then within a couple of hours, I noticed milk coming down your nostril, which isn't normal. I've never seen that before. So that is one specific moment where I knew instantly this isn't right. But at that point, no mention of genetics. The doctors didn't know you were only born. Just decided to wait and see type of thing. You could do better on your next feed. But that is one specific moment that I noticed straight away that something wasn't right. There are a few hundred people in Northern Ireland with, with the syndrome. Uh, it, it affects um, people from usually from birth. Um, they have physical signs and symptoms and then as childhood uh, develops they, they uh, sometimes will have mental health and behavioural issues as well. When, I'm, when people ask me what 22Q is I would usually say 22Q is a genetic condition um, and I think they most relate to a genetic condition being something like Down syndrome. Um, so it's very similar to Down syndrome, but also very different. Um, similar in that it's a condition that you're born with, that it has a spectrum of issues and symptoms, um, that even within the same family, even if you're identical twins, you will not have the same set of um, symptoms. Um, if you're the only person in your family to have 22Q, that means you have it de novo. If you yourself have 22Q, you have a 50-50 chance of passing that on to one of your children um, without intervention. Um, and that the cycle then goes 50-50 every time after that. Uh, if you don't have 22Q, the chances are one in 2,883 or something that you can spontaneously get 22Q deletion. Um, the range of issues are um, speech and language delay, um, heart defects, I'm, I'm going to list them kind of as they appear in children. Um, it can have spinal abnormalities, palate, cleft palate issues, um, vision issues, skeletal issues, um, then learning difficulties when they it starts to become obvious um, in childhood. 
um, specifically with mathematics. Um, and that's the same across the board, which I find personally very interesting. Um, then there are other mental health um, conditions, including autism, ADD, ADHD. Um, then as, you, as a person with 20 HQ gets older, there's a, a higher risk than typical in developing, um, say, schizophrenia or psychosis or other mood disorders, depression, anxiety. Um, typically speaking, personally experiencing, nearly every child that I've ever seen come into the clinic has some form of anxiety already present in young, um, at, at a young age, be it separation anxiety or transitions going from home to school or whatever that may be. Um, and then I suppose other symptoms will include um, a wee bit more difficulty than might be typical in social cues, reading what other people are saying and thinking, understanding social rules, which can be really tricky um, in the teenage years especially. Um, I think usually I would experience that people with 22Q are usually passive, kind in nature, loving, attentive. There are some patients who have 22Q who um, can be more ADHD um, and high energy, um, but usually speaking, um, it's the more passive, um, calm natured. Uh, sleep disorders can be a symptom of 22Q, which is quite normal and quite usual. Um, I think a lack of production of melatonin, finding it hard to go asleep and stay asleep. Um, there's, I think, at last count, there was like 211 different symptoms that you could possibly have. Not everybody is going to have every single symptom. It can just be like a wee selection for each person. Um, so that's, uh, ac the actual 22Q is a piece of missing information on the deletion. 22Q11.2 deletion is a piece of mi missing information in every cell in every part of the body, typically speaking. Um, there is no known reason why some people have a bigger deletion and some people have a smaller deletion because it doesn't seem to impact the amount of symptoms that you have if you have a bigger deletion or a smaller deletion. Um, they're still doing a lot of research into that. Um, they're starting to identify within um, the area of the 22Q11.2 there are different genes and if they are affected maybe the patient will have heart problems and maybe the patient will have spinal problems or more severe learning difficulties so there's a lot of research being done they don't know exactly at what point the deletion happens so is it when the sperm just meets the egg and um, to my knowledge across the entire world now i'm almost certain of this there is one set of identical twins where one has a deletion and one doesn't so that um arises the question of at what point it's not it's not usual typically speaking every um, set of twins if they're identical both will have the deletion so there's still lots of research and it'll be interesting to find out at what point does that happen um you know at what point does the deletion happen when my daughter was born with 22q we didn't find out until she was three um and when she was born I just, my dad had come into the hospital ward and prayed, he prayed for all my children when they were born, um, that her name was Lucia and she was named after the Lady of Light, um, that she would be a light unto the world and that her um, life would make a difference. And I feel like her life has made a massive difference. Had she not been born with 22Q, I don't think we would have a clinic. I don't think there would be a charity in Northern Ireland yet. So because of her lots of positive things have happened um, I have five children three are birth children um, and two of them have two different types of rare disease that I don't have um, and I just think that each individual person is unique and no one is normal I don't believe in the word I would say typical because it typically might happen um, but everyone is so different in their nature and in their ways. 
um, and for why you've been born with 22Q. I believe in God and I believe in a, a purpose um, for this world. So my, I would say my mantra is anything that you deal with that is difficult is a lesson that you should use to help other people with the same difficulties. So as an example, if you have 22Q um, or someone in your family has 22Q and there are difficult bits associated to that that other people might not experience, but that you should use those difficult bits to help another person or another family. Um, in the same way that if you had cancer um, and survived cancer, that you should use that experience to help other people in the same situation. So, um, me personally, um, I think that you have 22Q because that's exactly how you were meant to be made. And you are special and unique in the same way that everybody else is. And that you should use the difficult parts of living with 22Q to have an impact on other people and support them. So that's a personal explanation. That's why I think you've anybody has 22Q. And one of the biggest things with 22Q is thanks to all of the research that's gone on in the last 20 to 25 years, we, we know a lot about how children will present or can present. And that enables us, once the diagnosis is made, to, to educate mostly parents, carers, family members, and then as the patient gets older, the patient themselves, about what might be ahead for them and, and how to maybe spot early signs of, of deterioration, be that anxiety or, or activity levels or concentration. Um, so, so that sometimes allows us to intervene and treat early. And what we know about medicine in general, certainly in psychiatry, is that the better outcomes for patients happen when we have caught whatever it is they're suffering from early and provided treatment for that. So the stakes are very high and, and us knowing as much as we can about the disorder helps us treat, but, but more than that, helps the patients and their families. 90% of people around that to be with, with 22Q are exactly like you, Erin. Uh, this is a, a random event. You, you look at someone and you will know if they have Downs and that's just because of how that extra chromosome on chromosome 21 affects the body. Like visually you can tell and then also all the mental stuff that comes with that. But you look at you and unless you know what someone with Georgie or 22Q looks like, you're not going to know. I shouldn't have to hide because, yes, it was so emotional back in my childhood days and especially getting bullied and being told to just go kill yourself or being told to just, you just, you'd just be better, that the world would just be better if you weren't here. Being told things like that, then it, hurt my heart so much that I cared enough to listen to that mm -hmm. but also knowing that I've grown as a person and I have I know who I want to be and I, I find myself through the pain mm -hmm. I think that and especially now Compared to back then, it's a lot more accepting. Today's society is definitely a lot more accepting, a lot more open about um, disability and mental health Absolutely. as well. Mental health is massive these days, as it should be. I wish I had therapy back then. Mental health is a disability in, in and of itself. Yes. Um, in my eyes, anyway. Um, because how badly your mental health can affect you. And I'm a big believer in the body follows the brain. So if your brain and in your head you're doing awfully, your body will follow suit. 
Um, so treat your brain kindly. Treat yourself kindly. Treat yourself with love. And that's one thing you really struggled with. Yeah. Realising how deserving you are of love and affection. The thing about your future um, and how you've got to this point, Erin, is it has been a challenging educational path for you. You struggled to get through your GCSEs. Um, you tried um, a few different courses and you've spent a couple of years at the Met and then another couple of years doing another follow-on course. And now this this degree, you know, it, it, it seems to me that you've, you've found something that you really love, you enjoy it, you're really thriving doing this. So what I really hope is that you find something that you can turn into a job, a career, something that you can um, work well at um, and do well and progress um, and actually make a real career out of it. I mean, one of the, the biggest challenges for every kid with 22Q is mathematical concepts. And if, if you can't do maths, you're going to struggle with an awful lot of subjects. Pretty much every course requires maths. You know, you need mathematics, GCSE, and, and it took you many years to get that. To, you know, you kept repeating and doing, doing that. So I can understand if, you know, someone had told you you would never get into university, um, but it would have been a challenge for anyone to do that. You took a much longer path than any other classmate. Um, but you got there in the end, and I'm very proud of you for getting there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can see why, but, you know, I don't think anyone should have told you you'll never, never get there. But because I tried so many courses and because I was always told I would never get into uni, I would never do this, I would never do that. You've hyped this up so much and it's kind of disappointed you in a way. Yes. Yes. And then I tried to make it better for myself in a sense of going out and finding work, making connections, mm -hmm. making real friendships in the industry. And in a way, I have utilised my time at uni from doing that. But I just feel so judged in my class because of it, especially this project, making this documentary, going solo. You know, two years ago, I would never dream of going solo because I'm still learning. I was still a student. Yeah. I'm still a student now. But outside of uni, I'm a trainee. I'm a trainee in the industry. And people message me saying, I want to be on set with you again. And that's lovely to hear. And I, I just can't wait for more opportunities and for more connections and for more friendships to thrive and hopefully build upon. Mm -hmm. But from, I just feel it was really hard to get where I needed to be today. And I think people just, especially in second year, second year was such a bruising experience for me, mentally as well, because it kind of brought mm -hmm. back. From feeling, all your teenage years and... and especially in high school. I, it kind of brought back those feelings that I thought, okay, I've worked on those feelings. I, I don't need... You don't need them all resurfacing again. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's also just because like, you stood out. You were one of the older students and people, because your condition is so not known yeah. and no one actually truly understands the difficulties that you have to face and so people don't realise how difficult it actually is for you to make friendships because of how you process information. You had no real friendships the whole of your school, throughout your school. Des, um, which was quite tough on you, 
personally to understand it firstly and then to deal with it it was a very very tough time but in fairness you never give up and I think once you finally got that mask that gives you the determination to say well right I'm definitely going to try something else I'm going to you know you looked at everything we got out all the courses got up all the thing for you to try and pick something um that you were really passionate about you've always been into your music you've always been into well we always grew up listening to the radio and music was your way of your happy place whenever you were lonely and you were on your own um and that's whenever you then started to look into the media side of things so you've done exceptionally exceptionally well she was born it wasn't a choice that you really had to give up your job it was just this is what we have to do mm -hmm. i think your own longer term path is something that you know we need to be aware of you know as a person with 22q that now impacts your own decisions around having your own kids. So that is something that you need to be mindful of. Um, you know, if you want to have children, um, there's a 50-50 chance that you pass that on. So it's something you need to think about how you do that. Um, now I hope, I think the NHS does help here but I hope they'll be able to help you figure out how to do that. Um, and I guess there'll be some kind of treatment or, or something that allows them to select embryos that, that don't have this. Um, because I suppose you, you don't want to have another kid that is going to have what you've had potentially significantly worse. And you don't want them to go through that as well. Um, so longer term for your own life, is it, that, is, that is something that is going to be a significant part of your future. And like my dad said, I do have to be mindful whenever it comes to my future life, and especially settling down and wanting to have a family. But I know I have a lot to think about whenever it comes to that. There's a lot of people in Northern Ireland who get diagnosed with 22Q just after they've given birth. And that's because they've had a baby who's been born with 20GQ, then they get diagnosed. And I think that's really difficult to get it because you're dealing with, as a person with 20GQ, there's a feeling of guilt that you've passed it on, even though there's no real guilt associated, but you feel guilty. And before the 20GQ clinic was established, you were literally left to deal with that, the emotions of that, having a baby who was probably unwell and to try and sort all of those things out for yourself. This is a letter to my undiagnosed self. Dear undiagnosed self, I am writing to you as your future self, someone who has been through this journey that you're about to embark on. And I know that you're facing some difficult challenges right now and I want you to know that you're not alone. You were born with 22Q, a genetic condition that affects your physical and congenitive development. One of the physical challenges you will face is scoliosis, a curvature of the spine that can cause pain and discomfort. You will have to undergo scoliosis surgery in a different country and get a metal rod in your spine that was 47 degrees, now 17 degrees. And you will also have to wear a back brace for many years, which will make you feel so self-conscious and isolated. I also know that you'll face bullying in high school because of your condition and people will make fun of your back brace and call you names. They'll make you feel like an outsider and it will be hard to find a place where you feel like you belong. But I want you to know that you're also so strong and resilient and you will get through this, come out stronger on the other side and you will learn to embrace your differences and find a community of people who will accept you and support you for who you are, not what you are, like working on a television set that you never thought you would ever do on a kind of spark and in the years to come you will learn more about your condition and how it affects you like making this documentary you will find out that you are a de novo case and you will also find ways to manage your symptoms living a fulfilling life you will also discover new passions and talents like finding out finally what you wanted to do and you will also make meaningful connections with others and i know it may 
be hard to see right now, but your condition is a part of what makes you so special and unique. It is something to be proud of, not ashamed of. And there are many others out there who do share your condition. You just haven't met them yet and they do understand what you're going through. So to my dear undiagnosed self, know that you're so loved and so supportive and that you're not alone and that you will get through this. So keep your head up, as your mom would say, and stay so strong and never give up hope with love and understanding your future self. And to close this documentary, I asked everyone who participated in this documentary and I want to also say thank you to each and every one that did. I asked them what would be their word if they had one word to describe 22Q, what would it be? And this is what they said. Uncertainty. Complex. Fascinating. An adventure. Inspiring. The Aaron I'm sitting in front of is not the Aaron that I was sitting in front of 10 years ago. You are mentally so strong and so capable you have found exactly what you want to do through all the struggles of trying to go through so many different courses and all that money into those courses beauty childcare, everything to finding this finding your love in editing and finding your in love in sound so your mental health has so drastically improved over the last 10 years and I am so proud and honoured to call you my sister because your life itself should be a documentary. And my word, well that's simple, it's me.